Hey folks, Larry from Lumi Electric. I wanted to do a video show you guys kind of how we do solar. Um, this is a uh, 2.7 kW solar system we're installing, and it's all N-phase microinverters. And these inverters are fantastic. They have a 15-year warranty, and um, it's all plug and play. It's very easy to do. So you get one inverter per panel. Uh, we're using 12 230-watt Canadian solar panels, and this is the new... Uh, M215 N-phase microinverter. What I mean by new is um, they come out with a new connector system. Before we used to be able to just plug inverter into, uh, one into the other, which I actually like better, uh, but now they have us run a uh, cord which has connectors on it, and you terminate your cord back in the junction box there, and that's your 240 volt with the neutral and ground that goes back to the electrical panel. Um, but this guy's real easy. What you do is you take this connector here after you run your uh, cord and you simply plug it in here and when you're done that take the inverter and you mount it over here like that okay and that's pretty much it bolt it down and you take these other two leads here for your positive and negative plug them into your panel and it converts all the DC to AC right here so running through this whole cord is all AC it's all AC off the roof there's no DC which is a nice thing because uh, it's smaller wires you can use. You don't have to use a big, uh, big size wire when you're running DC off the roof down to the uh, electrical panel. Plus, you have to use uh, metal conduit when you're running inside. We use PVC um, because it's all AC, so you're allowed to do that. So that's pretty much the microinverters we're going to be using. No big bulky inverter. Um, uh, very, very, very easy to install. I really like it. As a contractor, it makes it a lot easier for us. Uh, as far as the racking goes, this is a uni-rack system, and you can see the L-feet there. We bolt it down to the roof rafters, and what we do is we bolt, uh, we bolt down to one set of roof rafters, and then we'll bolt down to a different set of roof rafters. This way we spread the load over the whole roof when we do this. And here's our grounding here. All right, and that guy just simply slides in on the track. You slide it on the end here. You bolt it down here, it's got a thing under here, it's called a weeb. And what that does is it makes a real good connection between the, uh, between the aluminum uh, racking and the ground. All right, and you put your ground in there, bolt that nut, tighten it up, and that's your ground. We grounded each rack. So we have one, two, three, four. We'll have two rows of six panels. Okay, so your 220 uh, comes into here with the ground. And we end up back in here with the ground off the uh, off the rails. So that grounds the rails. And then we have a second ground here for the N-phase microinverters. So we actually have two number six grounds. The inverters, here's a ground right here for the inverter. So we have this ground wire here. This will get, that'll get attached like that to each inverter when we set all the inverters. All right, but this is all the racking. It's going to be a nice job. Monday we're going to set the panels. We've got 12 panels going up here. Uh, we'll set the inverters first, set the panels, plug in the panels, and then bolt them down. And that'll be pretty much it. All the electrical's done. So I'll take you downstairs. I'll show you uh, the electrical system, how that works, and explain a little bit. You can tie your, uh, if you guys are using the Chinese screw tied inverters, I'll show you downstairs how to do the electrical for them um, if you don't want to use these. I, prefer, I, I would definitely recommend that you, if you're going to do solar, you use the end phase ones. Uh, if you're going to do wind and you want to get away with Chinese inverters, that's fine because there's really no uh, inverters for wind right now for low voltage. Like when I say low voltage, I mean like 60 volts or doing a 12 volt, something like that. The Sun G works real good. That's what I use for wind. Uh, but I do use the microinverters end phase for solar. Even on cloudy days, solar works. So it's worth spending the extra couple bucks and getting a hell of a warranty with it. And uh, it's a hell of a lot more efficient and it's 220, which is great, or 240, however you look at it. They even make them 208 for commercial too. All right, so I'll take you down, and uh, I'll show you uh, what the electrical looks like and explain all that. And just one more thought. There's the Skystream wind turbine we installed a year ago. A little bit of wind up here. It's been spinning a little bit every once in a while. Great turbine. A lot of people uh, I see on YouTube have been complaints about them, but this particular one here, man, not a flaw. Runs great. Customer is very happy with it, so we came back to do a solar system for them as well. So I'll take you downstairs and uh, I'll show you the electrical. Okay, we're now down here at the electrical, and I'll explain what's going on here. There's a couple different ways you can do this depending on what system you have. But remember the junction box up on the roof, it's connected to this breaker, it's a 2 pole 20. 
And this is just a sub panel. This panel uh, is fed from underground, goes back to the main electrical panel in the house, which is about 150 feet away. All right, so we have 220 volts come into this panel, um, and we're feeding the uh, end phase microinverters with 220 volts as well. So it goes from the main electrical panel, it feeds this panel. This breaker then feeds the microinverters, and when we go over to here, this is going to be the kilowatt meter. This is going to register everything that the solar system is producing before it even goes into the customer's uh, electrical system. So what happens is these two wires here, up top here, these are the ones that go up to the microinverters because we want this meter to spin forwards. We want it to register everything uh, that you're making for solar. And the meter I'm speaking of is not the kind you buy at Home Depot. This is the kind looks like your electrical meter outside. All right? But this one spins forwards. All right, your electrical meter will spin backwards, but this one will spin forwards to register all the solar energy that you've made. So it's a little better than um, using a TED or a, um, anything like that. All right, so what happens is the power comes through here and goes into the house, and which spins the meter this way, and then it registers everything. All right, and then these wires here go into the uh, go into the breaker. All right, and then this pipe goes up, and that's the pipe that goes up to the roof to the junction box. So that's how this thing pretty much ticks for electric. Now, if you were doing a uh, Chinese grid tied inverter, um, outback inverter, something like that, um, or DC inverter, you have a different setup. And your setup would be, uh, if you were doing a DC inverter, this would be the DC coming down. Okay, and when you run kind of a DC inside a home or a building, it has to be metal, not PVC. All right, that's part of the NEC code. National Electrical Code. All right, so then what would happen is the DC would come down through this pipe, and we'd have a big inverter here, and that would change it from DC to AC, and then we would go back and run to this meter, which would spin this way to register everything that you're making, then go back into the main electrical system. Okay, so that, that's one way of doing it if it's a DC inverter. If you're doing Chinese inverters, uh, whether it's a wind turbine or solar panel, then let's say this is your solar lines coming in. Um, you would hit your uh, inverter, and then from your inverter, what you would want to do is put either a junction box with all your cords in it or a bank of receptacles. Them receptacles would then get tied to the top of this meter. All right, remember, this is 240, so it's 120 volts and 120 volts. This system's different. I ran the neutral straight through, but you can tie the neutral here, and you can run the ground up to here and then go in. Okay, so there's a couple different ways. Um, but either way, it's nice to have this because it'll register everything you make. You'll know exactly what you're making. Um, you can use the TED, like I said, uh, the TED 1000 or 1100, um, that home energy unit system. That's not a bad system. This is pretty uh, This is pretty balls accurate, though, this kilowatt meter here. So basically, this is a 100 amp meter can. You can get these at Home Depot, Lowe's, Electrical Supply House. Uh, 100 amp meter can is about 25 bucks. And you can buy these meters online. They usually run about 25 bucks as well. All right, I got two for less than 50 bucks. Um, you know, and they are for solar. They're refurbished, but it says solar on there. And this guy's going to get renewable energy credits. That's why we put these in. Um, you don't have to register through the state to get your renewable energy credits, at least not in PA anyway. But you can check all that out at floodexchange.com. Uh, so basically, that's the system. Um, it's a nice system we're doing here in Douglasville, PA. I can't wait to put the panels up. Uh, that'll come Monday. Here's all the panels here. And as you can see, they're Canadian solar. Great, awesome panels. I love them. They have a 25 year warranty. There's all the info there on the back. I don't know if you can read all that. But basically, they're a 230 watt panel, um, 29.6 uh, VMP, and the VOC is uh, 36.8. Okay. But great panels, man. Built real well. Uh, I'm real happy with them. I use them on a lot of my customers' uh, installs. So that's how the system works. So as you can see, for an end phase system, it's pretty cut and dry, man. Uh, AC comes down out of this pipe right off the inverters, goes through the kilowatt meter. Uh, from the kilowatt meter, it goes into this two-pole breaker. Uh, from the two-pole breaker, it goes into the sub-panel. And from the sub-panel, it goes down this pipe and goes into the main electrical panel on another two-pole breaker. We have a 60-amp line feed in this panel. So on the other end of this pipe of the wires, there's a 60-amp two-pole breaker. And that gives him an option to add more solar, which he's actually going to do. I already set a pull string in the pipe here, so we can pull more lines up. 
So we're good for all that. And the wind turbine, this is uh, this is the wind turbine pipe here. All right, now we're going to straight out down the ground and out to the sky stream. And the other thing I wanted to mention too is I have a solar disconnect right here. This is for the utility. So we'll pull out this connect here. That'll shut my system down uh, in the event that we have a power or um, we have a power outage or the utility has to work on something. The guys can come over here and yank that thing out. That'll shut the system down. It gives them outside access. They don't have to come in. Oh, they can just pull it right there. Okay. What I didn't tell you was these wires here actually run through here, run up to this, through that pipe to that disconnect, and then back through and onto the breaker. But I don't want to confuse anybody too much. <laughs> I know I'm going a little fast here. Uh, if you want to just rewind it, slow it down. Uh, but again, if you're using the Chinese inverters, uh, it's the same hookup here. All right, it's a two-pole 20-amp breaker. Uh, you can go to a kilowatt meter, and then if you want to come out a kilowatt meter and put another uh, disconnect breaker, that's fine. Come out of them breakers, uh, put a receptacle on each breaker. That'll give you a 220 system, and then you can feed, you know, two inverters or four inverters, split them up evenly on each receptacle. So one receptacle might have two inverters, the other receptacle might have two inverters, and you pump all that through these guys here. And it'll make the meter spin forward, and you can see how much you're registering. Uh, like I said, it's pretty easy to do. Um, even if you don't have that much electrical knowledge, if you just slow this tape down a little bit, it'll explain it to you. And uh, I guess for about 60, 70 bucks with shipping, you know, with the with the can and the uh, the meter head here, you can have something like that, which is a lot nicer system. It looks a lot nicer. Um, it's not a hokey pokey thing where all these wires are hanging off the wall. And it just looks terribly awful. Uh, more professional way to do it. I have to do it this way. Obviously, I'm a professional, and this is all getting inspected, so I can't have that kind of system in here, nor would I put one in like that. Um, all right, guys, so just a quick view. I'll do another video when all the panels are in, and uh, hopefully you can get some learning out of this and set your system up to where it's nice and neat, and uh, use one of these kilowatt meters um, to register all your stuff. You'll know exactly what you're making per year. So remember, when it says 2.7 kilowatt, the solar system, and whatever solar system is rated, let's say it's rated for 3 kilowatts. That means it'll make 3 kilowatts a year, not 3 kilowatts a day. So make sure you uh, understand all that. This system here will do 2.7. Uh, more than likely, it'll do 3. So it's going to do 3 kilowatt, uh, three kilowatts a year. So it'll do 3,000 kilowatt hours a year. Okay? 3,000 kilowatt hours is what it'll do. All right, guys. So hopefully I've cleared up some stuff and show you some new stuff. I'm Larry from Leamy Electric. Uh, any questions, give us a shout. We would love to do a solar system for you. Thanks for watching, guys.